If you're struggling with the OCRA long answer, six mark questions or LORs, then this video is for you. Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video I'm going to be talking you through exactly how to answer those six markers level of response or LOR exam questions for OCRA so you know exactly how to approach these questions, fully understand the mark scheme so that you can get full marks in your exam which could be the difference between a grade. So make sure you watch this entire video because by the end you will know exactly how examiners mark these questions, the common pitfalls that students make that you can avoid, and my top tips to make sure that you are hitting that level three full marks every single time. Plus if you are really struggling with these six mark level of response questions and are serious about improving your grade then I've got the perfect thing for you, my brand new OCR workbook. Now this contains guidelines on how to answer these questions, example student answers with the examiner's feedback plus exam questions for you to practice with the mark scheme as well and the best bit this has been created by one of my teacher friends who is an OCR teacher and an OCR examiner I've worked with her on this checked it and we are both so happy with the final product and we know it's going to help you to improve so if you are keen to get your hands on this it's linked in the description below but for now let's get into today's video so let's start at the beginning what actually are level of response questions. So these are different to the standard other questions on the paper where you get one mark for one particular point you say. And that's because these are marked holistically. So the entire answer is considered and then your answer has to be determined which of the levels does it best fit into. So rather ticking as you go saying this sentence is worth a mark, instead they have to read the entire answer and determine the overall quality, depth and clarity of your response. Now you can easily work out in the exam when it is a level of response question because the questions will always have an asterisk which is this star next to it. These are typically six markers but not exclusively because they have come up before as three, four and five mark questions before but generally they are six marks. So let's have a look at the mark scheme then. These level of response mark schemes are always split into three levels. Let's take a look at each level. Level one is one to two marks and this would be a basic attempt with some correct ideas but it's incomplete. Level two is three to four marks that covers both aspects of the question but lacks detail or depth. And finally level three this is how you get five to six marks so this is your full marks band and you have to fully answer the question with depth, clarity and correct terminology. So step one for the examiner once they've read your responses to decide which of those three levels does your answer fit into. Once they've done that they then need to decide are you the lower or upper end of that level. So generally how they would work out if you were the upper level which would be two, four or six marks is they look at your answer and if it's well structured with few or only minor errors you'll get the upper end of that level. However if your answer is more unclear or less structured you'll get the lower end of each level which would be either one mark, three marks or five marks. So let's go through understanding the mark scheme in more detail so that you are able to get these top marks marks. Take a look at this past paper question and we'll work through it together. Discuss the potential uses of human embryonic stem cells, outlining concerns that arise when using them for research. Six marks. So the mark scheme for this question shows that in order to get in the level three, which is five to six marks, this is what you would need in your response. A detailed description of both how stem cells are used and the concerns about their use. A well-structured response with clear scientific terminology. So for this question, that means you'll be stuck at level one or level two, so capped at four marks out of six, if you don't fully address the question. So if you only mention one side of the question, so either just the uses of the stem cells or just the concerns, then you've not fully addressed the question and you cannot get higher than four marks. This might sound obvious, but it is one of the biggest and most common mistakes that students make on these questions, not addressing both parts of what a question is asking you. So I highly recommend that when you are answering these questions, take the time, and it probably takes about 10 seconds if that, to highlight or underline what are the different points you're being asked to address to make sure you don't accidentally only answer one side of a question. So let's go through how you would structure your answer for a question like this. The best way to get full marks is to use a clear and logical approach. And that's exactly what I'm going to share with you so that you 
can use it every single time to get full marks. Number one, start with an introduction, which should be about one sentence. This will be to define key terms if that's appropriate for the question. Number two is the main body of your answer. This is usually four to five sentences. And at this point, you need to address both parts of the question in a structured way. And finally, it's the conclusion. This would be one sentence if it's relevant to actually have a conclusion for the question that you've been given. And this would be where you'd summarize and link all the key points together or have a final judgment. So if we go back to that stem cells question, let's apply this structure that I've just gone through to that exact answer so you can see how how you can apply this structure model to the answers so you get full marks. So as a reminder, here is the question and we need to have the introduction, main body of text and the conclusion. So the introduction, here is what I would have. Embryonic stem cells are pluripotent, meaning they can differentiate into any cell type. So we've started there with our knowledge of the embryonic stem cells and a key definition. Then we move on to the main body, which would be about four to five sentences, we said. So for this one, here's what I'd write. They can be used for medical treatments, such as repairing spinal cord injuries and treating Parkinson's. They also offer potential in regenerative medicine for conditions like heart disease and diabetes. However, concern Concerns include ethical issues such as the destruction of embryos, religious objections, and the risk of immune rejections. So within that main body, we have addressed both parts of the question. We've gone through what are some of the uses, and we've addressed what are some of the concerns. And we've done it in a structured way by talking through the uses, and then we've got our counterpoint, here are the concerns. So finally then, our conclusion, which will be about one sentence, here's what you could say. While embryonic stem cells have significant medical potential, ethical considerations must be considered. And there we go, that would get you six marks. So notice how that response is quite concise and that is what examiners love. Addressing the question, getting to the point in a structured, clear way with no waffle, that is the key. So the last little thing I want to go through is common mistakes that you need to be avoiding to get full marks. Number one is only answering half the question. So for example, that stem cell question said uses and and concerns. A lot of the time the question does have two elements to address you have to address both elements to get full marks. Number two is writing too much irrelevant information. Examiners do not like waffle, you need to stay focused because to get the full marks, it did say that you need to have clear structured answers. And if you start to waffle saying everything you possibly know about the topic, it's no longer focused or clear. Number three is poor organization. If your answer is all over the place with scattered ideas, that starts to make it really unfocused focused and unclear and that means you're going to be detracting from the marks that you could possibly get. So follow that structure that I talked you through, the introduction, main body and conclusion to help make sure you do have a well-organized answer. And number four common mistake is actually linked to your knowledge. So in order to improve, that's linked to revision, but that's misusing key terms or giving incorrect terms. So examples of that might be if it was a question where it'd be relevant to talk about the mass, but instead you said weight. Or if you incorrectly said energy is produced Produced rather than energy is released. So these sorts of things that show your level of understanding of biology would detract from the marks as well if you use the key term incorrectly. So what I'd recommend to do then is everything that we've gone through in this video, put it into practice now. And you can do that using my free pack of level of response questions from OCR. And those are linked below. You can see them on my website here. Those are your freebie packs to have a go at. So the final tips before you go to remember are plan your answer before you start writing using that structure that we've gone through today. Use key terminology correctly and you could use my flashcards to help you learn and understand those key terms. Number three, keep your structure logical and easy to follow. And number four, go and have a go at those past hope questions to make sure you can put this plan into action and improve. I hope you found this skills video helpful and if you did then you might also find my entire OCR topic playlist useful too where I teach you the entire OCR A level which is linked here for you to go and have a look. But that's it for today, hopefully I'll see you next week.